World Workplace Europe podcast. Hi, and welcome to this World Workplace podcast. My name is Chantal Spruit, and I'm the chair of the Facility Management Netherlands Expert Group on Sustainability. And with me today is my co-host, Rob. Yeah, welcome. My name is Rob Linkert. I'm Portfolio Manager at PwC within the space of Facility Management. Yes, thank you. And our guest of today is Hannah Wilson. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, my name's uh, Dr. Hannah Wilson. Um, I work at Liverpool... Sorry, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I have to say it. Yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, Dr. Hannah Wilson, Hannah Wilson. Um, and I work at Liverpool John Moores University. So by day, my, well, my main focus is I'm DBA Programme Director. So I run a Doctorate of Business Administration, um, in the business school, um, and my but my research focus is um, looking around workplace strategy, um, a little bit in pedagogy. But my main focus is kind of increasing employees. Well, yeah, benefiting employees' experiences within the workplace. Um, but my background's in psychology, so I come from that like individual perspective, looking at people's experiences, how their perspective perceptions of the environment, um, and the environment being physical and um, social as well. Yeah. So that's my... That's I'm a little me. bit exciting about the topic. Uh, yeah. yeah. The, because we are um, uh, most famous, I think, about sustainability. We know a lot, a lot about sustainability. And to make today this connection between uh, your work field and uh, sustainability yeah, will be, yeah, I think, very nice. So, yeah. uh, welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I think there's also a lot of interesting uh, topics you already mentioned, like the actual workplace, which we're all here for today, of course, but also like uh, psychology and pedagogy. So I think that's going to be really interesting. But first, I would like to ask you, because you were here yesterday as well at the conference, what were your experiences? Because I noticed, or at least I thought it was very human-centered this year. Yeah. How did you see that? No, absolutely. I agree. It's been really, really nice to be here and see people who are thinking very similarly to the way that I think. Um, and you can see that change. Um, I've kind of only been in this um, area for you know five, uh, just over five years. Um, and I've seen a massive shift into more people looking at that kind of human-centered perspective, focusing on the individuals, their experiences. And so yesterday was fantastic, seeing the different presentations that were focused on that, but also speaking to people. And I like met so many people um, from a psychology background or people who were just really interested in that perspective. So it's been actually really inspiring. I was on maternity leave and I've come back off maternity leave only in November. Um, and so actually this has been a really kind of, it's really inspired me and like really motivated me back in the, you know, doing my research and everything, obviously coming back to work is quite difficult, but this is just, you know, it's, it's really, really good to be here and it's really kind of motivated me to, yeah, push forward with my research and that my passion's there. Nice. Well, that's really great to hear that you like re-energize yourself on this topic and maybe you can tell a little bit more about the research you've been doing on this topic. Yeah, okay, so um, the specific research that I'm going to be presenting this, well, that I'm presenting um, at the conference is around psychological sense of community and workplace loneliness. Um, this is a topic that I've been really passionate about um, for a long time, especially looking at psychological sense of community. Um, I did my PhD looking at learning space design, so um, designing higher education learning environments. Um, and obviously coming back, coming from that um, psychological perspective um, and coming into the built environment, my immediate thought was, right, how do we um, design this space for individuals? Um, and so I came across this theory of psychological sense of community um, and it just really spoke to me about connecting the individual with that social structure, with, with the organisation. And I thought it was a really interesting um, um, theory and kind of concept. Um, and then the more and more I read, people were talking about this as being relevant, sense of belonging, feeling connected. It also kind of drawed on my, drawn on my experience as well of wanting to feel connected uh, at that time to my university. Um, but as I went into um, kind of academia, working and teaching um, 
it, it moved into kind of more that workplace, seeing how relevant it was for colleagues, reading the literature around it, you know, doing more practical research um, within organisations and really seeing how relevant that social connectedness was, but that influence of community, which is more looking at individuals' perception of feeling connected to an organisation and to others within the organisation. Um, and the idea of workplace loneliness it really came from um, my passion around increasing people's experiences and looking at well-being within the workplace but as well. Are we are we lonely? Because it <laughs> triggers me loneliness yeah. at the workplace. So I'm imagining a completely empty office yeah. and then then I feel lonely. But but maybe you think something different about the definition about loneliness. Or yeah, so um, loneliness is really interesting. So um, loneliness is a massively pervasive issue. Um, it doesn't mean that people are there, like next to you. You can be lonely and have loads of people around you. Um, it's about your perception of the connectedness with others and how you feel about being connected. So you can be in an office with a hundred people um, and feel lonely, or you can be in an office with no people and feel connected to people and not feel lonely. Mm. And so, okay, but I, I think it's difficult to measure loneliness because, yeah. You know, because if you ask people, okay, are you lo lonely, or how do how do you how is the research you're doing connecting with loneliness? Because yeah, so um, th th there's been a definition of loneliness. A few people have tried to look at it. Um, it's interesting as well the multifaceted nature of loneliness. So um, looking at it in in terms of in the workplace or at home, they're separate things. So you can feel lonely in the workplace, but you know have a full fulfilled family life. Um, there is some crossover. Also, if you look at loneliness specifically and what we mean by that, um, it's looking at social, emo, social companionship, um, but also your emotional deprivation, so you're not feeling emotionally fulfilled by others. Mm -hmm. So it's this multifaceted approach. And so I use a measure, a psychological measure, um, a survey tool to try and measure people's workplace loneliness. Obviously, there's issues with using <laughs> quantitative yeah. measures to try and measure something that's quite complex, and it is something that moving forward past this research, I'd like to explore more in depth what we mean by loneliness in the workplace, because it's something that's thoroughly under-researched, but it's very prevalent. It's a massively mm. pervasive issue, um, and it's something that since COVID as well, People are talking about more hmm. um, as being important. People are talking about things like social isolation, etc. And workplace loneliness is this issue that people kind of are interested in and is a facet of well-being that currently isn't kind of understood and explored. Nice, nice. And what are the main findings you uh, have found out in your research? What, what are the outcomes? So my research was looking at the relationship between psychological sense of community um, and workplace loneliness. And I found that there was a negative relationship between these two factors. So if an, if an individual feels that they have this sense of community with their organisation, which again is a multifaceted element, you're looking at um, the meaning somebody puts to an organisation, to how fulfilled they need and they fulfilled they feel with their needs um, so there's kind of that's a multifaceted idea as well it's quite complex but it's their perception of the connectedness to the organization find a negative relationship with workplace loneliness so the higher somebody felt connected that psychological sense of community the less they felt um, that experience of workplace loneliness um, and what I find was even more interesting is I find a mediated effect so I love my quantitative statistical um, ideas but what that basically means is that part of the relationship between psychological sense of community and workplace loneliness is explained by relationship quality so psychological sense of community can increase people's feelings of relationship quality so having better relationships with others which therefore reduces their workplace loneliness that helps to explain that relationship so if an organization um looks at workplace loneliness slightly differently and takes it away from how it's currently considered as an individual issue. So looking at people's personality um, and their, you know, workplace loneliness. So perhaps people who are introverted um, are going to be 
um, lo higher in workplace loneliness. It's taking the like onus off an individual and saying, look, us as an organisation mm -hmm. can do something to support an individual's feelings of being connected with the, the organisation and with others. We can do something which will increase their relationship quality with individuals in work, whether that be their team or the larger organisation, and then that will help um, support their feelings around workplace loneliness. Yeah. Is it to be very difficult because it's more like multidiscipline? Because maybe it's it's stuck from the uh, management uh, yeah. for the from the board, maybe maybe from uh, HR. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering, is it is it not too complex? <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's a fantastic question <laughs> and something that I talk about all the time. So coming from a background of psychology, I've come into the built environment and now I work in management. So I would call myself very multidisciplinary. Um, that's the world that I work in. And my gosh, it's complex for me just trying to like figure that out. Um, but yeah, trying to implement these strategies, I think... Um, does take a very multidisciplinary approach and I think that's what we need to be moving towards more instead of having these siloed um, sections within an organisation we need to be able to have more joined up thinking between the two because HR are going to be very relevant they they look at supporting individuals kind of through policies and practices um, facilities managers we look at um, kind of looking at through more the form and the structure of the space but they are so integrated with each other. Mm -hmm. They they rely on each other so much. And then the managers as well have the impact of trying to communicate all of that information. So I think we need to have that more joined up thinking. And I think that's why I've been really excited um, at this conference, because there's so many people from all those different <laughs> backgrounds. And we are starting to have those conversations more. And people are starting to see the relevance of it. And it'll just be great to see how that evolves and actually impact practice and what, what we actually do some organizations do have that joined up thinking and you know facilities managers um hr they do sit together whereas in some organizations they're still kind of completely different entities mm -hmm. and like sit you know different ends of the office top floor bottom floor you know. all the own kingdoms we <laughs> must reduce them <laughs> must, yeah yes. exactly yeah. yes okay. and, and then i'm very curious what do you think is needed in terms of like information or skills from either facility managers or workplace managers to kind of tackle this problem? Mm, oh, that's really interesting. I think we need more education, um, expanding our understanding. Um, and I think something that I'm really interested in doing as well with my colleague is going back to what is the definition of what we're trying to do, redefining the possibilities of facilities management, um, and kind of looking at it as a, as a wider entity, looking at um, the idea of workplace um, is something that I'm really passionate about. So in the UK, um, our professional body has renamed itself, rebranded itself as Institute of Workplace and Facilities Management. And I think that's a really exciting thing that they've done because that's recognising like the complexity of what we do and opening up more opportunities. And I think that's enabling people to recognize that we need to be doing this and we need to be working across um, and you know, using all of the knowledge and skills that are just so relevant. So when I was doing my PhD, I was speaking to people from architecture, speaking to people from psychology, business, um, art and design, you know, everywhere and bringing this knowledge together. And I was like, wow, you look at it from this perspective. Um, what about this perspective? And it's just great to start opening those conversations up. Yeah, <coughs> sorry. I understand the connection uh, for the more um, uh, physiological part um, and social part. I understand very well. But how does it connect with design? Because mm. yeah, we uh, we are now in a space with ni nice plans here. Uh, but yeah, yeah I, I feel comfortable. I'm not lonely. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm glad you're not lonely. <laughs> yeah, that's right. that's good. So so. Uh, can you more uh, give more information about those topics about design and uh, connecting with each yeah. other? Yeah, I was thinking the same because also like it, it sounds it just makes so much sense when you say that, right? Because yeah. you, you don't want people to feel lonely, like especially if you owned a business or something. You want if you're a manager, you want your people to, to feel comfortable, to feel at ease. And then, like, you know, you have Friday drinks or something, you know, to accomplish those kind of things. And I'd also be very curious to see how it does it relate to, like, our actual physical 
space? I think that's a very interesting question. Yeah, no, great question. Um, and I actually just want to take a little bit of a step back and, and explain why I think those things are connected. So I came across somebody, um, he's a social psychologist called Kurt Leuven. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> In Britain, we usually say Lewin, and it's not that. So Leuven. Um, and he said that behaviour was a function of the person and the environment. And he said that the environment was both the social environment, but also the physical environment. So the way that somebody behaves is, it's, it's due to them as a person, but also their social environment and their physical environment. So that kind of got re- really thinking that actually the space is really important. The physical environment, um, you know, is really important for how we, you know, experience and behave with each other. Um, then I came across David Cantor. He's an environmental psychologist, um, absolutely brilliant um, psychologist. Um, and he came, he, he talked about place attachment. Um, and he talked about um, the place, which I've already talked about, the workplace, as being um, combined form, so the structure, the environment, the activities, and the meaning of that space. So again, I was like, oh, the, actually, that physical space is really important for how we experience place. And now place attachment is something that increases our sense of belonging, that we feel attached to that place. So then if we're looking at workplace loneliness and sense of community, that physical form is really important for us experiencing place, feeling connected, feeling that sense of belonging. So therefore we start looking at, okay, the space actually really impacts our behaviour and how we're experiencing things um, and how we're, you know, experience that social connectedness with each other. Okay. So what are, the, what are the practical exi- examples and what is not working and what is really working? And maybe you have uh, some experience with that. Yeah, so I, um, I'll go back to my PhD as well, um, just thinking about some of the early things that I find there. Um, so... Things like having social spaces, obviously it makes sense, but creating social spaces that actually encourage people to interact with each other, because it's all well and good to give open spaces, but that doesn't actually mean that people are going to have conversations, that they're going to talk to each other. It's about enabling those places for activities um, to occur. So having um, spaces people can um, meet um, and work together, co-working, come together um, and, and speak to each Is other. Is it more about uh, activity-based working like uh, sort of stuff? Because yeah. you hear a lot about open spaces and the disadvantages about these open spaces, about noise, for example. So when you talk about open spaces, can you more define what is an open space? Because Yeah, that's interesting. So... I do like some of the ideas around activity-based working. Obviously, we've moved on a little bit from that, and it Mm. is about having spaces that are suitable for the activity that's needed. Um, And it's about offering choice. Um, But what does choice actually mean? It's it's looking at spaces that people can work together, that they can work individually. Because, again, workplace loneliness, you can be around loads of people um, and not feel lonely, or you can be... Um, you know, on your own and feel, sorry, the other way around, that you can feel, <laughs> won't feel lonely. Um, so you need to have lots of choice for individuals to do what they need to in work. And, and that definitely in like leans over into kind of virtual working as well. You might need independent spaces that people can connect virtually and reach out to, you know, wider members of their organisations. <laughs> Um, so I do think drawing on ideas of activity-based working are good, but I think also moving beyond that and thinking about how people can um, move around that space and connect and feel connected to the organisation as well, and the organisational culture. Um, what is the organisation saying for that individual about how they should work with others and encouraging that working with others as well? Well, when I look at the environment, um, you say you're, you're talking about choice. I see something different. I see uh, people are very uh, like to be uh, routinous, so to have uh, their every own day place, their, their own, own desk. place, their own <laughs> desk. So when I go to the office and I see always the same people at the same desk, it's it's an open space, uh, for example. But uh, they like their they like their space and they like their own routine. So how do you um, uh, see the, the the change on routine and choice? Yeah, it's really interesting. <laughs> and this idea of territoriality is something that I'm really interested in, and h- about how people like 
want to have that space they have their own territory and I think it's really important to encourage that and allow that because for some people that's really important to um, you know to feel connected to the organization so organizations need to encourage that individual choice um, and actually I wanted to look originally my research I wanted to look at territoriality and um, workplace loneliness mm. because there's definitely a connection between those because two I factors. could also think that like if you have a, a, a larger sense of belonging to the company yeah. that you'd be less like claiming your own space right because you're like mm. oh we're all here together and if maybe feels more of like a, a family right yeah yeah definitely yeah. so I think organizations like they need to offer that opportunity but there's things that they can do to create communities so people might not feel that they need to really stake their claim on it um <laughs> and you know they can allow other people into their space and that will reduce sense <laughs> yeah. of community and for, uh, reduce workplace loneliness. Unfortunately, when I actually wanted to collect this data, it was in COVID mm. and everybody was working at home yeah. and I thought territoriality actually might be really high because people are wanting to like protect themselves and we weren't in the workplaces so I couldn't actually explore that but I think yeah. it's something definitely to look at in the future but organisations mm. should encourage that individual choice if people want to have that space um, they can they can claim it, but I also think it's really important for organisations to communicate how to use space, um, how we how different individuals can can go about um, you know putting their claim, or even teams, how to how do teams define their um, working environment so that they can develop that social connectedness. So things like having the opportunity to you know put things on a wall or have digital. Um, displays of where they are that can be easily removed and changed for the next day so the next load of people can come in and use that space if they want to so that space doesn't just remain static and people have their same desk because I think fundamentally everybody does want their own desk like it's nice to have that is, is it not to, not about easy. men or women because you triggered me about territory is it not more more a man thing than a, a woman thing or whatever i don't know i quite like somewhere to kind of put my cup and yes like so, everything. Yeah. so, so yeah. you, put, you yeah. put your carpet over there yeah. but it is, it's nice yeah. to have that so i think yeah. organizations need to offer ways of um balancing that out allowing that but also um making people feel that that's, you know, they don't have to do that. There's other opportunities, you know, that, as you said, that they feel that sense of belonging with the organisation. They feel safe. Mm -hmm. They feel, you know, comfortable to go sit with people who they perhaps don't know and have those conversations. So there's a lot of research as well about um, new spaces, especially with COVID-19 and people moving out of cities and having um, work hubs where people from different organisations come together yeah. um, and work together. And I think that's really interesting as well because you tend to, um, if you think of sense of community and organisations push pushing this, well, you might feel really close to your organisation, so you just talk to those people. However, the way that you organise these hubs, you can create interaction between different organisations um, and I think that's again about these places communicating how to um, interact, how to use the space and open up opportunities for shared um, communication through the form and structure, but I think the meaning and the activities that occur in that space are supported by that form and structure and they communicate um, that meaning and allow for different activities to occur. So you, so going back to this idea of activity-based working, <laughs> yeah. some of these ideas are really important still that you need to have opportunities. And it might be giving up 10% um, of your space that you would be putting desks in, which you could fit X amount of people, um, and giving it over to different space that actually allows for this interaction and this connection. So a fantastic example that I've seen um, within an organisation is that they gave up desk space to put in a, um, a social um, staircase. So it was a staircase that people used to get to the next floor, but it integrated desks, comfortable seating. <laughs> so it, it made people, thinking from a well-being perspective, it made people walk up the steps, but also it made people stop, take a break, yeah. speak have to talk, people, yeah. have a talk. So you can see, and, and the organisation was communicating, actually, we have not prioritised desk space. 
we've prioritised the space for you, our employees, to have this communal area, to have these conversations. So actually, the organisation is communicating that that is a important thing for the employees to to have and to mm. experience within the workplace. So it's not just you must sit at your desk and do yeah. work. It's okay, let's get the you social aspect is really important of how you do your work. And, so facility yeah. management is about also to create these kind of places, so different spaces. Yeah. I think so. And also to um, communicate how to use these spaces, mm. um, making sure that you think of every last detail. As I heard, of a present, I heard a presentation, a round table yesterday, talking about how they created this really gorgeous space, but nobody used it. No one it used it. I think that's the really most common example. Comfortable benches. Yeah. 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 People just weren't comfortable. Yeah. So they're not good. It's, you can have the best intentions in the world, but if you don't think about every last detail, mm. then you know they're not going to use it. So I think it is this... It's, it's a complex thing to think about, you, but you really need to break down all of those um, experiences that people have in the workplace that impact their behaviour. Going back to Kurt Leuven's mm. idea, their behaviour, if the environment isn't there, the physical, the social, um, and the individual, you know, how they experience the world, it's going to influence their behaviour and they're not going to use that space. Mm. So they're not going to perform in the way that you... Think they should. Yeah. yeah, and I think like we're we're about to start rounding off the the conversation, but maybe just for a more practical uh, approach, like does your research come with a sort of uh, step plan or something? <laughs> I'm I'm sure it's not that easy of like follow these two like, steps. Check, and, just and, a checklist, and, okay. and you're done. But like, what are some uh, like tips you can give it to people listening? Of like, make sure the first step is to to do X or Y or. Yeah, so that's really interesting, and I probably can't go into as much detail of you should do this, this, yeah. this, and you're going to achieve if, well, it. If, if only it were that simple. If only right? it was yeah. that simple. Yeah. However, I would really say start with your people. Think about the, 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 the needs of your um, employees, the people that you're designing space for, that you're wanting to come into the office. What do they need? And start from that point. Think about um, the activities that they do, the job um, tasks that they do think about their needs and their experiences of the um, workplace and I think looking at that human approach um, and thinking about kind of sustainability that's how we're going to create environments that people want to come back to and they want to they want to use and they're going to kind of be there and be practical over a long period of time they're not going to be like an empty space that you then have to go back to and rethink and re-engineer yeah um if you start with right what do we actually need then hopefully that you're going to get it right and especially working with those people not just thinking about what do they need actually speaking to incorporate them, them incorporate as well yeah them into yeah. that process and and when you go back into that space incorporate them into how to use that space so it isn't just here you go you've got this brand new work environment um, you was, you're used Good to luck. sitting at your desk. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Good luck. Go for yeah. it. You yeah. need to communicate how to use that space yeah. as well. And, and I, I think, think also, especially like incorporate them early on in the process is yeah. very important because often you see people thought about things really long and really well, but yeah. in practice it just does not work out. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then post occupancy evaluations, you know, you get the feedback. But at that point, it's kind of too late. You've yeah. done it. Um, and especially talking about the workplace because it's so. Static, basically. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And just uh, as a final question, based on uh, the time we have to, to round final things question. off. Uh, the cliffhanger <laughs> is still, for me, the, the sustainability part. But sustainability you're going to address it, don't you? Go for it. Go, go for, for it. it. So I was, I'm just curious, how does sustainability connect to your research and all the outcomes? So because I didn't find anything about sustainability in, uh, in our preparation uh, for this conversation. So maybe you can address uh, more about sustainability and the environment and your research, of course. It's interesting because I think um, it's, again, thinking about what is the sustainability. Um, yeah. And it's such a multidisciplinary word, and we all use it slightly differently. It's such a buzzword, too. It is like a buzzword. Everyone uses it for every, everything. Yeah, yeah every um, discipline uses it. From my perspective, um, creating sustainable environments are environments that are um, going to be um, there, they're going to be used, they're um, efficient for the long term. Um, and I think creating spaces 
for people, that human-centred perspective, um, it means that you're going to have... Um, the, the space is going to be used, it's going to be used effectively, um, we're not going to have to worry about kind of, um, you know, reducing our portfolio, so we're not having to, um, you know, make new plans and apply more money into, you know, what we're doing. Um, so I think creating um, environments for people, you're going to um, have more sustainable um, projects um, and sustainable use of space. And also, if you think about um, going into a little bit of environmental psychology as well, the way that you communicate how people use space and the importance of space, it can encourage people's behaviours as well. You can nudge people into how they use space. So if we think kind of sustainability from more of an environmental perspective, you can um, help people be more sustainable in their practices. Mm -hmm. So encouraging people to, you know, it's very basic, but, you know, um, recycle um, and, you do, and, and do things like that. So the space can communicate yeah. how you want to... Um, how you want people encourage. to behave. Yeah. 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 Again, Again, how you want people behavior. to behave. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I think it's also what you're saying is, uh, like, it, it does maybe take some more time and attention to put in, like, the initial part of, of the process, like, to actually talk to people. What do you need? And, like, that's more time than people usually take, I think. Yeah. But you're also saying, like, it, it works out in the end because you actually have a space that's first of being used yeah. and also that can be used for a longer time rather than after two years. I mean, we all know the examples. After two years, you have to redo it all again. And yeah. that is just not sustainable in terms of materials, in terms of an organisation. Also your own effort. Find, yeah, your effort. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, an organisation to kind of keep on, if we think very critically, an organisation wants to earn money. They want to be sustainable in their business practices. And if they're having to keep on ploughing money into redesigning their spaces, um, re changing organisational structures, things like that, then that's not going to be sustainable for the business to keep on practising. Whereas if you kind of really think about, right, how can we encourage um, positive working behaviours? Um, you know, putting thinking about that right from the beginning, you can encourage sustainable business practice as well. And going back to that idea of behavior, if you want to increase business performance, you've got to think about your people because they're the people who are you know, working in this space and producing um, and working productively. So if you want to increase productivity, you need to think about how can we support people, those individuals, through the social space and the physical space to increase that business performance. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, Hannah Wilson, for being our guest today, and thank you, Rob Klinkert, for being my co host. Yeah, Chantal, my you're fixed. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Chantal Spread, and I was your host today, and thank you so much for listening to the World Workplace Podcast. Mm -hmm.